Hello, everyone. This is John Sterling. I'm sports director here at WMCA, and I thought while we have some time to spend together, we fill it by playing a tape of some interviews I did not too long ago. I hope you won't feel this is too dated, but I thought you'd find it very interesting. It's conversations recorded the very night the Yankees got Pat Dobson and Sam McDowell in separate trades from the Braves and Giants. And you'll hear the voice of Pat Dobson, then Sam McDowell, then Daily News columnist Phil Pepe, and lastly, the Yankee manager, the Major Ralph Houck. So let's hear those interviews right now. Now, uh, after a couple months with the Braves, he's coming to a ball club that again can win the pennant in, in the Yankees. So let's talk to uh, Pat Dobson right now. Hello, Pat. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very happy for you because... I'm very uh, happy for myself. I, I'm, I'm sure you are. I can imagine the feeling. Uh, first of all, you... Game 17 games out, or from a team 17 games out to a, game, a team, you know, that's uh, one game out. Pat, I'd like to, um, uh, I ask you kind of a couple of tough questions. It's, um, you know, because I'm sure the people here are wondering, and I am too. Now, we know your track record. Now, how are the Yankees able to get you? Well, why would the Braves, a team that certainly isn't overburdened with great pitching, why would they give you up? And how, and how did you get out of the National League? Well, I think it was a team that really started with a abundance of starting pitchers at the beginning of the year. They got themselves in a position where they had uh, five or six right-handed starters and one left-handed reliever in the bullpen, and uh, they started the season that way, and, uh, you know, and uh, Harrison, who is, you know, a few years younger than I am, uh, they feel like he's going to be a good pitcher one day, and they want to get him in a starting rotation. And as long as I'm there, he's not going to get in the starting rotation. So I think that was probably the biggest problem right there. And they feel like, uh, you know, that one of these days is going to be, uh, you know, a big winner for that club. Well, wouldn't the other National League clubs prevent you from, from leaving the league? Don't they have to pass on you? I don't really know. I, I you know, I'm not really uh, up on all those rules and everything else. But I think... Uh, I think that at any given time, if one uh, one team wants to get a player through the league, they can get them through. Oh, I know there are gentlemen's agreements. Yeah, now, you know, how, I, I think that any uh, you know at any time, if they you know if they want to get any player through the league, I think they can get through the league. How is your arm? Uh, I don't want to go on your stats, uh, which obviously aren't impressive. But how have you thrown the ball this year? How do you think you're going to be? Pitched, a... I pitched well this year. I uh, you know uh, it was just a situation where uh, uh, we didn't have real good defense, you know. At Atlanta, like we had at Baltimore, and that made all the difference in the world in the way I pitched. I'm not a strikeout pitcher; I never had been. I threw a lot of ground balls, and uh, we didn't have anybody who could catch them. Uh, you know, I pitch uh, uh, pitch a few games where I give seven or eight hits and five and be, you know, like uh, infield hits. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I only gave up one home run in about 60 innings that I pitched this year. So I really wasn't getting bombed. They were just uh, hitting everything I hit was just a little looper here, a little looper there, and it was just uh, it was just a victim of circumstances. I pitch a good game, they give up two runs, and we end up scoring one. So your arm, in other words, is good as it's well, ever I've been. I never had a sore arm. Good. And you know, and I don't, I don't know if I ever will have a sore arm. Well, I hope you don't. I hope you don't. Yeah. Well, I, I gotta tell you something. You, uh, it isn't that you don't know this ball club. Of course you do, but you haven't seen them play this year. But you're in the league last year. Right. The Yankees have just changed around. If, uh, I know that uh, Rizzuto and uh, Frank Messer were talking about this last night on the air. That you look down the Yankee lineup, I mean, they have Munson hitting 7th and Felipe Alou hitting 8th, or some nights they have Jim Ray Hart hitting 7th and Munson 8th, I and mean, that's the kind of hitting they have. Yeah, well, I know they've been scoring a lot of runs. In fact, in the beginning of the year, I told uh, Murray Chess that I picked up the Windy American League pennant well. before the season even started because they got medals. I thought that that was the big thing, you know, that they really needed last year. Well, he's been great, and Matty Lou, of course, getting his base hits, and Jim Ray Hart has been just super as a designated hitter. You know, I didn't. The uh, only thing that hurt. See too much of him when I was in the National League at '70. He was, uh, you know, in Triple A that year. But he was injured, yeah. From what I understand, you know, Dick Dietz was my uh, roommate at uh, at Atlanta, you know, and he was with uh, San Francisco. And he told me Jimmy Ray was a good hitter, and uh, you know, he wasn't too much with the glove or anything. But the designated hitter seems like the perfect thing for him. Well, I. I, I think this is super, and I'm, I can understand how happy you are. Now, uh, where are you now? In, still in Atlanta? Yeah, I'm in Atlanta right now. I'm going to try and get everything I have to do here straight in the way. I'm going to join a club Saturday in, uh, in Kansas City. I'll be there in Saturday, you know, Saturday in time for the game. When, when was the last time you pitched? The last time I 
Last time I pitched, I got a win, believe it or not. Oh, good. <laughs> I pitched one inning in Chicago, and we scored five runs. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the afternoon game, yeah. Five runs, and they ended up beating them eight to seven, and I got the win. Yeah, that's right. That's a guard at the home run. Yeah, I remember that, uh, so, uh, reading that. Hey, that's great. Pat, I'm really, uh, I'm really happy to have you, uh, join me in New York. Uh, I think that's great, and I hope what happens um, this year is what happened in Baltimore. Well, I'm really happy to be here. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just so glad to get away from there because I was going crazy, you know, after starting for three years, and, and I haven't missed a start in three years, you know. The two years I was with Baltimore and the one year I was with San Diego, and then all of a sudden get put in the bullpen, you know. I didn't even enjoy coming out to the ballpark, and all of a sudden, you know, it just uh, the game really became uh, a job to me, and it's never been that way. You know, it's always been fun, and... Uh, I'm just really happy to come to New York, and I know I'm going to get a chance to start there. The yeah, there's no question. I, I'm, Hawk's already been quoted. He really wanted you, wanted you badly. So uh, yeah. you're going to, a lot of people in the stadium are going to see a curveball now. So yeah, I just hope I get a chance to help win the pennant, that's all. Captain I Hook. Hope has the to it, you know. I well, I can be a part of it. I, don't, I really don't see why it shouldn't happen. I, I really don't. I mean, it seems like the Yanks have just about all the essentials to win. So we'll look forward when you get here. All right, good. And uh, we'll probably see a pitch on the road on TV. Take care. All right. Congratulations again. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Pat Dobson. Hello, everyone. This is John Sterling. The Yankees, of course, are definitely challenging for the pennant this year, and we're proud to be the voice of the New York Yankees. I'll be here to talk about the Yankees and all sports every evening, Monday through Friday from 7 to 10, and Saturday afternoon from 4 to 7. But you know WMCA does more than just talk sports. Ken Fairchild and Bob Grant every morning. Leon Lewis and Phil Tierney in the afternoon. Barry Gray and Long John Neville at night. WMCA Dialogue Radio. <laughs> now a New York Yankee. Speaking of a guy who can throw some smoke, here is Sudden Sam. I didn't call him Sudden Sam because he runs fast. It's because his ball gets to the plate in a hurry. Anyway, he's the newest Yankee coming over from the Giants, and we thought we'd talk to Sam McDowell right now. Hello, Sam. How are you, John? I'm good. How are you? Real good. Well, fantastic. It, it really is, isn't it? <laughs> you better believe it. I feel so damn good. It's or, excuse me. Well, that's good. I'm good. Well, Dan is all right on the air. Um, well, I wanted to ask you, by the way, we already talked to your manager, Ralph Houck, who has plans to start you, not to relieve you. And uh, I asked yeah, him... I wish I could talk to him. I tried to get through to him four times today, and of course they have a game today. Well, we had to get him in the dugout. Oh, you did? Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Well, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, why Why haven't you been starting for the Giants, and how is your arm and all that jazz? <laughs> well, John, I can only say this. Uh, my arm is as good as it's ever been. In fact, it's better it's been than uh, last maybe five, six years. As to why I haven't been starting, I can only say this. I really don't know. And uh, the Giants are in first place, so, and I didn't want to rock the boat, so I'm not going to say anything, you know, either way. In fact, I do not disagree with anything that they've done because the Giants have been super to me. They've just been great people, a great organization. In fact, I made a statement to one newspaper, and I said, in fact, if I ever leave the Giants, the only place I want to go is the Yankees. Because I know they're first class. You know, they don't have this little bitty thing. And besides that, I'm going with a guy that I always thought was my idol, Ralph Powell. Well, that's great. I, the Yankees really did something today. They, uh, Their hitting has been great all year, Sam. And uh, and their pitching has been really inconsistent. And today, uh, they got you and Pat Dobson. And uh, I, don't, I really don't see any reason why the Yanks can't win the pennant. That's the thing. Well, I will say this, uh, and I think you know me myself. I do not predict. I don't. Uh, I don't do anything like that. I've been in the game too long. To say this. But I will say this with Pat Dobson and myself back there. Not necessarily myself, but uh, I just hope the hitting keeps up because I guarantee the pitching will. Well, that's good to hear. Um, now you're going to uh, get to Kansas City tomorrow. I'm going to try every way I can to get there. I assume that I could be there by tomorrow. But see, I have a wife and family at mm -hmm. home, and they were all set to go to San Francisco. Oh. And the problem is now we got to change all our plans, and I'm just hoping that I can find some kind of an apartment. Because uh, to me, my, my family is the most important thing in my life, and I've got to worry about getting, it, getting them an apartment. But uh, Gabe Paul and quite a few other people with the Yankees have tried to assure me, and I just hope other people will assure me. I can get an apartment somewhere where there's a swimming pool so my kids can have fun. Well, I'm sure you can. This is kind of a big city. And uh, 
they have a lot. They're kind of expensive things, but so is San Francisco. You know, I think people forget that about ball players. That now, now you've had to rent a place for your family to come out. Let's right. see. As a matter of fact, when I called my wife this afternoon and mentioned to her that I'm that I was you know sold to the Yankees, I'm going to Kansas City now. Uh, she was just finishing up packing everything because she was supposed to meet me the day after tomorrow. That's, and fly back to us to San Francisco. Yeah, that's. Uh, I tell you, people really don't understand that how tough it is to have different homes and apartments. And you know, it's the old gag about sending your laundry out, and uh, then you're not in that city, especially if you're changing leagues. You don't even hit the same towns. So, um, although it, the odd thing is that you will be going to San Francisco. What next? Uh, what is it? Are the Yanks are there? What next Tuesday, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, so you you'll be there and. Uh, I don't want to spend your... It doesn't help me get back about uh, 20, 21 suitcases and what have you. <laughs> no. Anyway, listen, we just wanted to say hello, and we're glad to, that you're on uh, the Yankee Ball Club. I mean, you just got to help. I mean, the way you can throw, you just got to help. And well, I... I don't know about that. All I can say is that uh, I just hope and I pray to God that I can help them. Well, I think you can, and uh, it's good to have you with us. Well, and, it's great to be there. And we'll, we'll see you at the stadium in a couple of weeks. In fact, it just makes me feel... So thrilled, you know, that I'm going to be in the same locker room that, uh, you know, the greatest final I've ever had in my life is making panel. Is that right? I'm going to be in the same locker room with him. Right. <laughs> in fact, you will be, because he'll be back, I guess, old timers day soon. Sam, take care. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. On June 21st, the New York Times endorsed Herman Badillo in the Democratic primary runoff for mayor. Quote, Recent debates between the Democratic rivals have strengthened our conviction that Mr. Badillo would respond to the complex challenges of the mayoralty with an originality, effectiveness, and energy incomparably greater than that of his opponent. And they concluded Mr. Badia would make the more effective Democratic nominee, and his victory would result in a more united city, end quote. Congressman Herman Badillo has also been endorsed by the New York Post, the hospital workers, the Amsterdam News, the auto workers, the clothing workers, Borough President Abrams, and the Citizens Union. It's been a long climb for Herman Badillo, from the tenements to the United States Congress. Along the way, Herman Badillo learned what makes New York work and how to make it work better for all of us. On Tuesday, vote for Herman Badillo for mayor. A city as tough as New York needs a mayor as strong as Badillo. Paid by New Yorkers for Badillo Committee. Here's a follow-up now to the Yankee trade. Well, let's talk to Phil Peppy right now. Hello, Phil. Hello, John. Hi, how are you? All right. What's uh, the feeling down there with all these deals the Yanks have made? <laughs> the feeling is that we're all tired and uh, we've been working very hard today and we're waiting to find out. They haven't done anything in two hours. We're waiting to find out who they're getting next. Oh, right. <laughs> That's, uh, have they, do the Yanks have to make changes tonight now? They're bringing two ball players in. They've got to get rid of two ball players, right? Yeah, well, uh... McDowell arrives tomorrow in Kansas City, and Dobson can't get there until Saturday, so uh, they'll have to make changes, uh, at, well, if, at least one tomorrow when uh, McDowell arrives. Uh, Lee McPhail is on his way here. He should be here, like, within a half hour. In fact, if he walks in here while I'm talking to you, I'll have you talk to him. Good. Hey, Phil, let me ask you this. I, I asked Dobson this, and he really didn't know, and frankly, I don't know either. Now, you know Dobson's a hell of a pitcher. Now, h how do they get Dobson from the Braves? Uh, how, how does the other National League teams allow him to get out of the league and all? Well, I think uh, several reasons. One is that uh, he's had a uh, tough time winning in the National League, and, and you know, he's, maybe he's not as uh, desirable as uh, he was a year ago. Number two is that he's probably, you know better than I, because you know him from Baltimore, he's probably up in the $60,000 range, I would guess, and there aren't that many teams that are willing and able to pay that kind of money for a pitcher. A uh, particular pitcher who they are not convinced is going to win in that league. Uh, that's the only explanation I can have for why he got out of the national out of the National League. Now there is another explanation, and that is that, as you know, people are put on waivers all the time. You know, clubs are always asking for waivers. They tell me that they once got waivers on Mickey Mantle, right? And they just flood those waiver lists, and people look over the list and they say, well, they're not serious about him, so they don't put in claims. And before you know it, they've they've uh, obtain waivers on these people. Once they've got that, then there's no problem. You don't need waivers in the other league. They don't have to get... Oh. It doesn't have to be waived in the American League. You know, no way that uh, Baltimore would have waived them. Oh, 
I see. Now, you just taught me something. So he only has to go through the National League. That's the National League, right. Oh. So there may be three teams that would be in a position where they could afford to pay the money that, that uh, is needed and the players that, that are needed to uh, obtain him. And, you know, maybe one of those teams is the Mets. And where is he going to fit in in the Mets pitching staff? If you were a shortstop or a center fielder. Yeah. Would... Right. I know. I, I see. I see. Now, that's a good point. Well, Thompson won, I think, 14 or 15 with San Diego a couple of years right, ago. Right, 14 which, and 15. That's you know, which was a great record. I right. Mean, that's, that's when the Orioles saw him and wanted him because he was pitching for a for an expansion team that never scored any runs. Well, uh, it's really a, an unbelievable deal for the Yanks. Both of them, you know, and you asked me what the reaction was. That I, uh, the, the clubhouse was very, very alive tonight. You know, <laughs> everybody was... Uh, talking about it they seemed very pleased you know and there were some funny things said and some good things said but they're, they're very happy people respect sam mcdowell because he can throw you know throw a lot of heat and people respect dobson because he's been a winning pitcher and they're very happy to have them over here well that's uh, i think it's a giant step by uh, the yankees because their pitching has really been very inconsistent uh, they've certainly been scoring enough runs but right well they, you know you really want to look at it this way they've, they've obtained three pitches in the last 24 hours because they got steve klein back last right night. That's they've got point. six i mean who else has got six starting pitches where else and, and you can throw those six names in a hat if, if dobson and mcdowell pitch like we know they they can pitch you take those six pitches and throw their names in a hat, and you put, say, which one of them is number six? Well, whichever one you come out with, who else has got a number six pitch who's that good, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. Of course, got a guy backing him up in the bullpen who's oh, just been man, great. Right. You know? he, he gave us all heart failure the other night when he stopped the line drive with his yeah. hand. You know? <laughs> well, you know, he did last night. He uh, wrapped his left arm right up to the elbow with uh, an ace bandage so that when Hout came in, he looked at it, you know, he tried to get <laughs> him heart failure, but... <laughs> But there's great, really, believe me, there's, uh, I don't often say this, but there is, I guess that game that they won, uh, the, the first game down here, really lifted them because there's great feeling, great spirit. Uh, the guys are really happy, and uh, I think these two, these two uh, additions have helped that, too. Um, so I don't know where they fit, what, they, what are they going to do, uh, how he's going to pitch six starting pitches, and they are starting pitches, you can't consider McDowell or Dobson relievers. Mm -hmm. And anything Hawk says is that you can never have too much pitching, I guess, which is a truism in baseball. Well, McDowell has been pitching in relief. Yeah, guys. but uh, I asked Hawk about that. He says, no, he doesn't think of him as a relief. Wow. Well, I didn't know that, but that's something that he's going to start six guys. Well, well I, I'm not even saying that he's going to start six guys in rotation. He said, I have to be fair to them. I have to wait until they arrive, and then I'll talk with each of them and find out why they haven't been pitching better and you know just what their feelings are before I make a decision and he'll probably work them both in in relief uh, initially mm -hmm. but I think ultimately he thinks of both of them as starting pitchers now he says the problem will take care of itself double headers uh, you know a tenderness in, in someone's arm leave, makes him sit out one one uh, time in the rotation and he feels that these things will work themselves out, and uh, he, he just can't have too much pitching, you know. Well, it, it, it certainly is better than having too little pitching. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thank you for coming on, giving us a little bit of what's happening down there. Okay, and John. We'll, we'll talk to you soon again. Very good. Okay, Phil. Right. Phil Peppy of the New York Daily News. This is John Sterling. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the interview that we just heard, that phone interview in sport that I did just a short time ago. We've had a few moments to spend with one another and of course all the sports heard right here at WMCA New York look for you again real soon